Hi, welcome along to another video. As usual, the links to the articles are in the information section of this video. And if you are listening to this, then hopefully you are the resistance. We'll start in the UAE, makes a change from starting in the USA. In the national, can cloud seeding save Earth? In this article, they look at how the UAE harnesses the rain with cloud seeding and also Australia's effort to save the Great Barrier Reef through cloud brightening. Staying in the UAE, in the Esquire, Middle East. What is the UAE's rain enhancement project? The country can expect a lot more rain over the next few years. There you can see a cloud seed in plane with the flares on the wings. The country's new rain enhancement project aims to promote the advancement of rain science and promote the scary term of weather modification. Interesting sentence there promote the scary term of weather modification so they're acknowledging that it's a pretty scary subject in the sense of creating fear for messing around with it this is backed up with psychological reasons lack of water could lead to civil and interstate conflicts so you have to modify the weather because lack of water could lead to civil and interstate conflicts so you know could lead to climate collapse as well could lead to weather pattern collapse but hey staying in the esquire middle east temperatures are dropping across the uae nighttime temperatures 13 degrees centigrade the colder weather is all a part of the plan for the uae i'll let that just settle into your brain the colder weather is all a part of the plan for the uae the country has unveiled a new rain enhancement project that will promote weather modification and increased rain over the next few years. It will increase the ability for the UAE to start growing an increased number of crops. Sounds good. Just added into the mixture there of uh, social disorder and increased crops. But it's all part of the plan in the UAE. Taiwan, Greater Taipei. Northeasterly winds have brought rainfall to the reservoir and catchments area since October the 8th and the administration carried out cloud seeding on October the 16th to further boost precipitation in the area. I mentioned this uh, situation in the Crimea in the last video to do with water shortages and you remember from a few years ago there was a bit of a conflict in the area. To combat the drought, the Crimean authorities are even ready to try cloud seeding to generate artificial precipitation. Over to the USA, following on from the story in the last video, with the weather modification legal notification, there is in the cashvalleydaily.com, water conservation critical to meet Utah's water needs now and into the future. And there's a little snippet of information there. Utah has been cloud seeding since the early 1950s to help augment the state's water supply. Cloud seeding is a low-cost, low-risk, non-structural method to increase existing water supplies in target areas of Utah mountain range. They claim it's low-risk. So those of you that know about the subject will remember Mary Ulford in Tasmania was killed in floods caused by Snowy Hydro and their cloud seeding. So that's not very low-risk. She was a pensioner couldn't escape floodwaters after cloud seeding was carried out. Then there's a 250 people in the last flooding in Kerala in India and that was after Karnataka had carried out cloud seeding. 250 people died. Is that a low risk? I don't think so. And then in the 50s in the UK you've got the Lynmouth flood that's where the RAF killed about 35 people after creating a flood during weather modification experiments. Coincidentally, Utah has been cloud seeding since the early 1950s, same period. We've seen in the UAE in the last couple of years, structural destruction, so no loss of life yet. And we've also seen in Canada a couple of months ago, structural destruction, but no loss of life caused by cloud seeding. So this is not low risk. For someone to write this is low risk, they are uneducated and ignorant of the subject they are writing about. Over to the Bengal Daily News, geoengineering could be our last chance to stop an Arctic thaw. I mentioned in the last video as well, or well, video before that maybe, about the Russian icebreakers going through and making sure that the northern sea trade routes are open. In this article, Hugh Hunt for the Centre for Climate Repair at Cambridge University, remember the name, Hunt would now be willing to consider putting an aerosol into the stratosphere over the Arctic Ocean. 
Three years ago, if you had asked me, I'd have said I hope we don't have to do any of this geoengineering crap. It's not what you'd want to do. But now I just can't see this predicament going in any other direction. I really hope we do proper government-funded work on how these geoengineering techniques work. So you have icebreakers going through opening up trade routes and then you have a centre for climate repair at Cambridge University with one person basically saying they're happy to spray the Arctic out regardless of what you think, what the public think. All they need is the permission of the Council of Eight. They're the people that claim to own the Arctic. They don't need public consent. They just need the consent of eight governmental bodies, which they would get, of course. Goes without saying. So remember the names, remember the organisations. Every video always gives you details of who's doing what, where and when, whether it's in the past or current. If you keep a diary of that information, you should have a lot of information. In the National Law Review, US trends and developments in alternative energy, the climate conundrum, as long as measured greenhouse gases continue to rise in the atmosphere, humans should control what they can control. Most mitigated or curative projections, for example, geoengineering, solar radiation modification, stratospheric aerosol injection, and so on. Humans should control what they can control. Really, humans should be making better decisions about whether they should be controlling what they can control or not let's face it. On a gospel radio station, 94.1 KPFA, who are vigilant as always, there's a podcast planning for the climate crisis where someone or another discusses his concerns about geoengineering. In the Boston Globe, when it comes to solar geoengineering, we're still very much in the dark. Well, I love that pun. It's a misguided bid for a quick fix to the climate crisis that might hold off the symptoms of global warming without confronting the necessary task of kicking the world's fossil fuel habit. In digital trends, we could slow climate change by dimming the sun. But should we? Like that's a discussion. Presumably that's a rhetorical question. Over to The Ecologist, the journal for the post-industrial age, hacking the earth. Geoengineering turns hearts and minds away from the cause of the climate crisis and inevitably dilutes the urgency with which it must be addressed. From the Wilson Centre, new security beat, 21st century diplomacy, foreign policy is climate policy. Deploying the technologies required to achieve negative emissions like solar radiation management brings into the equation a host of questions etc etc. And sports news to finish up with this week in The Spun. Former Packers QB quarterback, for those of you that don't know about American football, tells a bizarre Aaron Rodgers story. Rogers seems to subscribe to the chemtrails conspiracy theory, which is very interesting, because so does Lana Del Rey, so does Prince, the singer, may he rest in peace, and so does Chuck Norris, the person who would beat crap out of you if you say <laughs> he's a conspiracy theorist. There's also rumours, of course, about Vin Diesel being geoengineering aware, amongst other people. So it's good to know Aaron Rodgers also seems to subscribe to the chemtrails conspiracy theory. On that note, which will probably give YouTube the excuse to put a chemtrails conspiracy theory board on this video to make sure everyone knows that it's a conspiracy theory and that I've mentioned chemtrails, I'm also going to then mention anti-vax. Vaccines are bad. Just to see how they deal with that one. Can they actually put two boards on the video? Or do they have to choose now between anti-vax conspiracy or chemtrails conspiracy who knows love you loads see you very soon hope you enjoyed this week's video no big money drops this week unfortunately for you but who knows what might come up next week look after yourselves see you next time